Mike, how are you doing? It is so good to finally be able to jump on this image review for you. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time to send some of these images for me. And I think what's awesome about it is going through these images again uh, and just reliving the incredible experiences that we had while we were out there. So um, like I said, I'm very excited to jump on here today. Um, and hopes, hopefully give you a, few, a little bit of constructive feedback about some of these images. Uh, they look awesome, Mike, uh, and really, really proud to see how far your photography's come in the past year. So, um, yeah, let's jump straight into it. And um, what I love about you, Mike, I love the black and white. You are a legend with black and white. Um, so we're obviously going to be spending a little bit of time focusing in on that today. Um, and let's let's see what we can get. So jumping straight into it, Mike, uh, with this first image of yours. Um, absolutely love the balance that you've got here in terms of, of course, so iconic. Beautiful big Tusker, Kilimanjaro in the background. One of my favorite things about this image is this little pop of white here that we have from one of these egrets um so well balanced because i think that just pulls you so nicely what i find myself doing i'm jumping up to this contrast this contrast up here beautiful contrast over here pulling me across the elephant to this as well as then just pulling you all the way down the trunk to that little bright spot so i think you've composed this image extremely extremely well one little touch up i'd probably look to do here mike is maybe just increasing some of the contrast here amongst kilimanjaro um, so probably the best way to do that just in my mask I'm going to go to a brush and I'm going to decrease the blacks um, and pull up the whites and, and simply just go and brush over this area um, I don't need to overdo it but I think just adding a little bit of extra contrast there is just going to get that snow um, popping for us at the top of Kilimanjaro so something along those lines even if I have to if I'm just going to increase the contrast um, somewhere there and then I'd probably just pull on this tone curve a touch you'll see that will just get those blacks popping for you a little bit get those whites up slightly um, and if I go switch that on and off you can see there just how we've we've kind of taken it from a damp or, or sort of a single tone throughout the mountain and just increasing the contrast and the details um, throughout that probably a touch of clarity uh, will also add up nicely for that there's clarity just going to bring that in there. So yeah, very, very subtle touch up there. Um, besides that, Mike, nothing much more I would do on this image. Uh, like I said, I love your crop. I love your composition um, and a beautiful image. Then uh, moving over, uh, I think we really, really had such a great time when it came to photographing uh, the herds of elephants. Um, I know that was at times we were, you know, just enjoying it and watching it. And then all of a sudden, you know, bam, a, a beautiful scene unfolded. Um, and there's definitely one or two that are coming up here. So starting off with this one, um, absolutely love this image, Mike. Um, I think it's so, so well composed. Um, I love what you've done with the sky in terms of just making it a lot more moody, a lot darker. Uh, and what I love about it is with this deep point of contrast that we have running across the image and the elephant sm falling smack bang on that, um, I think it's incredible. Um, and all in all, it's a very clean image around them. So what I find myself doing when I look at this image, if I close my eyes and I jump straight into it, I find that it does, you end up doing this, you know, you, you searching over this elephant, all of this beautiful texture, sharpness, contrast is drawing your eye. Uh, you know, then you have the brightness of the tusks over here, the contrast around this elephant and you end up falling into this motion and there's not many distractions anywhere uh, for you to go. Uh, so for that reason, absolutely love how you've edited this mic um, I think it's just a really really uh, cool image of these two young bulls playing around um, and not much that I would add to editor moving on this I think Mike I have to be honest with you uh, thinking back to the trip I think this is my favorite image that you captured and the reason being for that is I think it's just it's there's so much emotions in this image um, you know, when we think about, for anyone who's been to Amboseli and, you know, for us now who've, who's experienced it, we've experienced it twice together, uh, you know, these elephants go on a journey every single day. Um, and the family units are, are just incredible where, you know, we'll be sitting there in those open fields and all of a sudden um, the herds start going back towards the, the thicker stuff. Um, and family units are such a serious thing there. And I think you've captured that so incredibly well in this image. Um, I think if I remember correctly, we jumped onto the 2470 here. Let's have, yeah, 70 mils. 
Um, and I think it was such a good call to do that because what you've done is you've created beautiful scale. Um, you've created a lot of intimacy in this image uh, with that depth of feel that you were using. Um, and I think the edit all in all, extremely, extremely beautiful. Possibly what I would add on to you, Mike, uh, just looking at this. I know we did work on this while we were out there, but remember how we added some contrast to these guys specifically. I'd probably just go and emphasize that ever so slightly. So, uh, you know, the um, method that we used the last time, if we just go take a radial gradient, we go and we pull it over this guy. Um, I'm then going to go and subtract uh, with an object, brush over this little egret, uh, and just get rid of him. And basically all we want to do is very similar to the method we used in the field is just darkening those edges around him. That's just going to create a little bit more contrast because I think these guys add such great value uh, to the image. So just by simply pulling that exposure down ever so slightly, um, as you notice, you'll see we just get a pop of contrast over there. Um, I'm probably going to do another one just for uh, this guy here in particular. Um... And in fact, we could even pull it over. There's a few of these guys here. So just going to try and make that feather nice and big. Um, I'm going to go and subtract with some objects, uh, specifically on this guy in particular. Oh, let me just redo that quickly. Subtract. Going to go with an object. Get in a little bit tighter. Um, let's see if this makes a bit of a difference. And again, I think the reason being is I love how these guys just add value to this image of, you know, the, the egrets, the contrast that they bring about there. Um, and it's amazing to see how they literally follow those elephants everywhere, um, you know, picking up on all the the insects and things like that are kicked up that are kicked up in the grass uh, when the elephants are moving. So same thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull that exposure down slightly. Um, and all we have done there, once again, just increasing that contrast in that area uh, to bring those guys slightly more into the light. Um, what I do like, however, though, that you've done is by increasing the brightness on these tusks in particular, they still stay the brightest part of the image. And remember, when we're talking about the things that draw your eyes, the sharpness, contrast, brightness, all the time, you're going to keep on going to the elephants. And from there, I don't mind people's eyes coming down to this egret or down to these egrets. Because over and above that, not, not much else places for you to go. Um, so I think you've edited this extremely well. I love the trunk, the curl of this trunk. I know you took a series of images here. And I think what you've done very well with this is, you know, the curl of the trunk draws you in over here. There's a nice S curve coming down here. Um, the contrast of these tusks in the background absolutely stunning stunning photograph mike uh like i say this is your favorite for me but nevertheless um looking forward i'm looking very forward to see this one on the wall i hope it's going up so looking forward to seeing that mike um over and above that um absolutely love this um i know you've been you know tapping into the idea of the sepia a little bit more um, and I think this has come out very, very nicely. I know, if I remember correctly, I think you did this in a 16 by 9 crop, uh, which I think is perfect for this. Yeah, I see that, which is great. Um, all I would probably just look to do, yeah, Mike, is we are competing with contrast of these bushes all around. Uh, so potentially what I'd look to do is just to increase the contrast of those elephants. Something like just pulling down your blacks a touch, pulling up these whites, um, and... Of course, remember how nicely blacks and shadows go in hand just so that you don't lose the detail in those very, very dark areas. Um, and over and above that, probably just going to pull the contrast or, or the darks down in our tone curve a touch. So all of a sudden what we have is we just increasing the contrast a touch there. Um, because these are the JPEG images, I probably won't get much. Oh, there I do get a little bit of detail, but you'll probably have a little bit better detail Um on your raw file and what you can probably just go and do Mike is just go and pull that temperature down ever so slightly so that you you don't necessarily get an orange sort of washout um, but but rather keep it to those nice sepia tones saturations also going to help you uh, a little bit over there so you can just see before and after there we we emphasizing the contrast and we're just holding true to those uh, those soft tones that we had out in the field um, so that's kind of what I'd look to do there um, however, I love how you've captured it, Mike, that, you know, just having all these elephants coming across like this great and stunning image. So well done with that. Uh, moving over to these cheetah. Uh, <laughs> 
what a story. Uh, you know, I remember us waiting so patiently for, uh, what was the one elephant's name? Frankie or F- Frankenstein or something like that. Something with an F. Um, and waiting for, for Craig to come up. And all of a sudden, you know, we, we saw the chaos of the cheetah and having these cheetah coming straight to us. I mean, standing on <laughs> the only tree in sight. Absolutely insane. Um, so awesome image um, and love how you've captured this, Mike. Um a few little things that I'd look to do here. I want to make sure that we don't lose the cheetah uh, in and amongst the contrast that we have in the back here um, and, and, and these sort of tones that we have here. Just want to try and emphasize that. Um, so probably last little touch-up that I'd look to do. Sorry, I was double-checking this already, so let me just remove that quickly. Um, probably only thing I'd look to do here is I'm going to go with the radial gradient. Um, I'm going to throw that over our cheetah specifically. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to invert that mask. So we're working around that and I'm going to go and subtract the sky. So if I do that, so now we're just working on this area here. Essentially, if I go extreme, that's what we're doing, right? So I just want to increase contrast down here um, and touch that up ever so slightly. I think the best way we can go and do that, chuck in a little bit of blacks, uh, bring up those whites. And lastly, just throwing in a touch of clarity there. Um, and that's just going to emphasize that contrast and, and these nice rich colors that we do have over here. You know, putting up your saturation ever so slightly. I don't, you know, saturation you've got to be careful with, so I don't want to go too much. Uh, but just a subtle little touch up there. So already you can see what we've done here. We've just kind of taken it from a dull, uh, flat colors down here just to increase that contrast. Now, to make sure that we get these guys popping, uh, all I'm going to go and do here is I'm going to go and duplicate and invert this mask. You must just double check that it will pick up the sky. So I'm going to go again, uh, just going to subtract the sky. And I'm going to bring the exposure up here ever so slightly. And that's just going to bring the brightness up on those boys um, and, and, and pull you straight back into the middle there. So if I switch this mask on and off, you'll just see how we've completely inverted that. Made sure that this is the, inf uh, you know, the uh, subject of the image. Um, as well as holding some of the beautiful rich colors that we did have there. So you can just see what we've done there. Very, very subtly increase some contrast. Um, so all in all, great image. Love it, Mike. Love your composition here. Love those cheetahs smack bang in the middle. Uh, happy days and perfect. Well done. Then, the one and only. This is what we went for, Mike. This was the photograph. Um, and the moment, you know, I, I saw your Instagram post on this recently um, and just loved your caption about how this was literally one of the most incredible safari moments you've ever had. And I absolutely agree with you. <laughs> um, and I love the memory that we've got behind this, you know, that image of you and whoop, got you got your photograph and we were out. But what a special moment. What a, um, a special encounter with this incredible creature. And I think you've done it so much justice with this photograph. Um, there's really, really so little more than I do to this image, Mike. Um, I think you've you've thrown so much emphasis onto the tusks. Uh, both of them, you know, the way you've increased the brightness and that rich white contrast in there. Um, I love the the textures that we have all along his trunk over here. These ears popping out. You know, we worked so hard for this photograph, um, and I think you've done it such beautiful, beautiful justice. So really, Mike. Nothing more that I do to this image. Absolutely love it and well done uh, for capturing this so well. Very special. Moving on to our week in the Mara, um, we were very fortunate. Very fortunate. Um, I think we were. It was, <laughs> it was so great getting into the Mara and just being able to, you know, focus on some other things like the lions, like the crossings, and we were very, very blessed with some great sightings there. Um, and I think, as always, you've captured it really well. So, uh, one thing I'd look to, a couple of things that I'd look to, to work on here, Mike, um, probably on the crop, I'd look to change the crop ever so slightly. The reason being is I just want to get that exit going out our top left corner. And I'm going to show you what I'm, the reason I'd want to do that now. Um, I like these guys coming from this left hand side down out the bottom right. Um, I think that crop is perfect by, by pulling in the crop over here, even if you have to move it over slightly. I like the fact that we still have uh, these guys coming down the right hand side. They just kind of pull you because if you do add this crop over here, what's nice about it is you kind of run into these areas and you are pulled 
all across the image with these guys being on the edge specifically. Um, and now if I, the reason I want to show you as well, just that exit point, if I change my overlay of my grid, remember I do that by pressing the letter O on my laptop. So I'm going O for overlay, press that a few times till we get to this squiggly one. Here we go. Essentially what this is telling us is this is how your viewers, you want your viewers eye to run in this image. And I think to a large extent, that's what we've got. We've got good contrast in this area over here. And we then get pulled along this side here back up to these guys along the ridge line and then because of this point of contrast here we draw an out of the image here also to these guys in this corner so that's the reason i'd probably look to change that um, um that crop in that way uh, we've still got this good contrast up here which is also awesome uh last thing i'd want to do is just to you, you know you've gone for a very artistic and um you, you know a great editor so don't be shy to push the limits and for example you know i'd be looking to get some deep blacks into this and some deep whites popping up like that you know so something like that and then if i need to if i feel like i've lost a bit of detail in those blacks just gonna go up here pull my shadows up and you can see all of a sudden we bring that back to life but i love to have this rich rich white colors that we've got in and around us so already if i just do that little touch up you can see what we've done so along those lines, change the change the crop on this one um, and just emphasize those nice, deep, rich colors that you've got. Coming on to this one, what a sighting, what a moment. Um, <laughs> and shooting this at 2,500 ISO, 2.8, one hundredth of a second, and you captured it perfectly. Look at this tail on her head, magic. And I just love this pop over here. Probably the only thing I'd look to touch up, uh, let's just change this overlay again back to our rule of thirds. Um, I'd probably look to make the cub um, cent center of the image, Mike. And the reason being for that is that will then force my, these power points here up on this tail, down on this tail. And with that cub central also just gives a better balance to the image with this negative space over here. Previously, if we leave it to how it was, uh, there's a lot of negative space here which is almost kind of pulling you over uh, to one side of the image and for that reason i'd look to just bring that in slightly make that cub central get those power points on those tails and bang off you go so that's the touch up i'd look to make that besides that the edit looks great um, and i think it's awesome an awesome shot then there's something about these male lines that you managed to uh, capture really well mike and i think uh, you've done them justice these are beautiful stunning images um, and there's a lot that you'd be able to do with these. I'm looking forward to seeing these prints as well. Um, regarding this image, I'm probably going to bring down my crop. Reason being that negative space there. Uh, we, we can just pull it to this point here where we have them on PowerPoints like that um, and literally edit. I think you've done it perfectly. I remember how you added those beautiful radial gradients here, um, emphasizing the light coming across. You probably could emphasize that a bit, a bit more because remember by making that natural light, playing with the natural light that you had with those radial gradients, specifically on Manuele, this, this line in the front, great. You do want to make sure to an extent that you're still increasing that on that line as well to create that sense of natural light coming across. So literally what you could go and do is I'd probably go and add a nice radial as well. Um, sorry. Uh, I'd go and add a nice radial gradient on this guy over here. What's going on here now? Uh, let me just double check here. Keeps on wanting to go into my zoom in. Not too sure why it's doing that. Let me just see if I pull up a, uh, let's try that again. Let's go with the radio, uh, radio gradient. There, now I can draw it, that's better. So I'm just gonna go and draw one over here with the idea of, um, you know, putting the light on that guy as well um, in the exact same way that you did that on Manuele, okay? Now, of course, you don't want to emphasize him much more, so you can go subtract, select the subject. It should get rid of him, so something along those lines, okay? And now what you can do is, once again, just slightly pulling up that exposure on that side there, and what's nice about that is it's going to create good contrast, deep, rich contrast again for you with this dark mane, um, and if I just go and switch that on and off, you can see what we've done there. Just lighten that background, emphasize the brightness on the side of him as the sun was coming across, um, and happy days about that. So let me just close that. Um, and yeah, re regarding that, perfect, perfect, perfect edit. I love how you've emphasized this guy. <laughs> so stunning. 
Um, regarding this image, I love this. Mike uh, was working on that a little bit. So just want to show you here. Once again, you've emphasized that light coming across him here. Darkened all of this. It's it's beautiful. One thing I wanted to point out for you is just this dark mark here. If I run across my, my outside, that does pull me ever so slightly. And I want all the emphasis to be on this guy. And I want to show you the difference. So I'm literally going to go to my removal. Um, and if we just go and brush over this one little spot over here, might have to do it once or twice uh, just to clean it up nicely. And you'll all of a sudden see now, like, you know, you can't unsee it if we leave it there. So just by removing that, we've made sure that he's the darkest part. There's no way that we, we're getting pulled to any other directions, um, but just keeping it nice and simple like that. All I do here, stunning. Uh, moving over to this image. Uh, <laughs> you and your male lines, Mike. I, I don't know where you're going to squeeze this one on the walls, but good luck. <laughs> good luck. Um, also, very, very well shot image. Probably the one thing I'd maybe just want to make sure of is the highlights of this, uh, you know, on this chin over here. Uh, very simply what you can do. I like that though, because what it does do is it pulls you into that area and it pulls you into that place. So all I'd look to do maybe is just to bring down those highlights a touch and soften that ever so slightly. Once again, you'd probably be able to do it more on your raw image just to protect those details. But just going to come down here on these highlights. Just make sure that we're not clipping any of those um, and softening it ever so slightly. You can see that we've still kept it as the brightest place um, and emphasize that nicely. And you can just see what we've done over there. So stunning. Love that. So moving on to this guy. Um, what a great way to finish our trip. Um, you know, last morning there we were on our way to the airstrip and we get a black rhino and a cheetah on a mound absolutely insane so um, I think what you've done so well here Mike is you know you've just created simplicity in this image and I love that so much because again it's one of those images where you have nowhere else to go but to this rhino you do get pulled to this horizon but what I like about that is it it kind of creates a sense of pulling you across to you know what's off, what's off there what's in the distance and it creates that story so in terms of your edit, very, very nicely edited. Um, not too much more I do. Maybe just increasing this, this exposure ever so slightly. And that's just going to give us enough details to still see that this is grass. But just increasing, increasing that beautiful contrast as always. Um, happy day. Something like that. Love this. Such a stunning image. So well photographed. And lastly, but certainly not least. Um, I... I think what we can look to do on this image here is because, you know, we had to get ourselves into some awkward positions to get as low as possible to photograph this. Um, and I think what you've done really well and been able to do is create good separation from the cheetah and a complete clear background. So all I'd really want to do here, Mike, is potentially let's go see if we select the sky um, and we just want to brighten that up, just create more contrast. So I see it's picked him up a little bit. So I'm just going to go and subtract with an object, um, and if I simply just brush over him, uh, just to remove the edits on him, let's come down a little bit. I'm going to go over this termite mound as well because I said picked up a touch there, so something like that. There we go. I'm happy with that. Still want to try and remove that termite mound. Going to go with the objects again. Um, brush up here. There we go. Happy days. So now we're working on our sky, right? Simply, Mike, all we have to do here is just by increasing our whites and, and blowing out that background, it's not like there's any details. You know, if we look at one of your elephant images, for example, there's beautiful details and, and um, a nice touch up to the sky. But in this image in particular, there isn't any value there that we need to hold. So for that reason, I'm literally going to look to just brighten up that exposure touch. Let me go back to this one. Uh, just going to brighten up that exposure touch. What that's going to do for us is going to create more contrast at this point here because we are dealing with a lot of contrast here. So we just want to make sure that this is the point that you go to first, right? So by touching that up and increasing that sky, um, what we can now do and what that gives us room to do is just to go and bring up the shadows across this whole image. You're going to see how it's just going to brighten him up a little bit um, and we almost turn it into a high key touch here. 
And I'm just going to pull those blacks down just to keep that beautiful contrast that we originally have. Now, if I hold that before and after, you can see how we've just brought a few more details out on him. Um, we've increased that contrast um, and there's nowhere else for you to go here. Um, and just looking at that, uh, I think we can be very, very happy with how that's looking. So all in all, Mike, when we look at these images, uh, I think this is an absolutely fantastic portfolio of images. Um, some, some really great memories uh, that I absolutely cherish with you and very, very thankful for the opportunity to share this with you. And I hope that this little um, feedback uh, might be helpful for you uh, in preparation to get these things printed. I'm looking forward to seeing that, Mike. And as always, it's a big pleasure. Um, I look forward to sharing more moments with, with this like you out in the field. Um, and, and as always, you're welcome to reach out with any questions that you have. So keep well, Mike, uh, and we'll stay in touch. Thanks for your time.